form and then the discussion form and taking it to the audience. Over to you, respected sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we were hearing the, uh, the previous panel, a wonderful discussion and many propositions has come forward. I'm sure that this panel is also going to propose uh, their thoughts. And the panel which uh, I have been given to uh, moderate and uh, chair is such an august panel uh, having the, the who's and who in this particular field, none other than uh, Professor Ranjan <laughs> Pravatsar and all the panelists in front. We are, uh, the topic which has been given to us is uh, to deal with uh, accreditation or process in current scenario. And uh, if you critically look at for the HEI, there are many uh, accreditation uh, agencies that has come to play. And if you actually look at to the HEI, the involvement over the years and in fact the whole, the whole of the year, the HEI are involved to prepare the documentations for the ranking, accreditations and uh, we have got a NIRF, we have got a ARIA, then somebody is preparing for NAC, somebody is preparing for NBA and so on and so forth and we are going for the QS, QS ranking also. I think this is the need of the hour where we can think and ponder that whether we need to have so many uh, ranking agencies and if you actually compare many of the ranking parameters, whatever uh, is followed uh, in these ranking agencies are similar in nature. But it creates huge burden on the HEI and it consumes lot of time of the faculty who uh, faculty and the, uh, you know, the officers of um, the higher education institutions. So this time otherwise we could have fruitfully utilized for the quality purpose actually for that is mean ranking. So uh, I think uh, the time which has been given is 30 minutes and we have got so many people here uh, who would be uh, eager to share their thoughts on this particular uh, topic. So I would request uh, Professor Prabhat to start with. And I the time was, limit, probably we can have five minutes. Yeah, I thought it was late council, get a little chance to think about it. So first of all, the same problem that we see in the school education, uh, where we have interest tests and the coaching, same thing happened with the rankings. So again, we are trying to crack those rankings rather than focus on the quality. And so we try to conform to those, the documentation, X, Y, Z, whatever is there. Actually, HEI should focus on the academic quality that is expected out of them. But we always try to conform to certain norms of NBA, NAC, and IRA, whatever it is, that how do I get the best out of that. So that cracking of interest test continues for education institutes also in the same. And the parents and everybody ask the same question. When I moved to Pune as a founder vice chancellor of DY Patil International University, by the way, there are so many DY Patil institutions that we have to be very careful because <laughs> <laughs> so my campus in Akurdi is named D.Y. Patel International University. Uh, I'm the founder of Vice Chancellor. I had the opportunity to create from scratch. I said that if I follow AICT, Pune University and so on, I will not will create a new system. I took the risk of saying that let me do what is needed to win rather than conform to to some institutional ranking systems or to some regulatory bodies. It was a big risk because parents come and ask you this question. We are not funded by, uh, like my previous university I was with, funded by Reliance University, I am not worried about funding there. But here I was worried about the revenue source. But I took that risk and my management also thankfully agreed to that. We created curriculum, fortunately, AICT adopted that, they liked it very much. So we became the change maker for the country, but that bold step when we were taking, we are not sure how it's going to happen. So these ranking systems has to have the flexibility to allow the freedom for it to, to, to choose the path they want to choose. I'll just give one more point. Uh, there was a question being asked in the previous one, it's related to this. In Berkeley, for example, and most of the uh, US universities and also in India also for example IITs, 
we follow large classrooms are there especially the core courses in earlier we have 200 300 400 berkeley we have 1000 seater when i went i was a teaching assistant one faculty was teaching 1000 students 20 25 also teaching assistants were supporting we got groomed in the process to become teachers there was a discussion going on that but such systems in india are still not accepted so it has it is best global practice of the world but if you go into one of these ranking systems you will find that they cut you out of that that you can't do this because you cannot have so many faculty members you have to have one student ratio or whatever it is so our ranking system need to have the flexibility to allow for the freedom for education institute and i would stop at this point so let my other colleagues discuss thank you